MBS Show, episode number 287. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everypony. Hello, man. How are you? Good, good. All right, then. And also joining us is Wills. At first, I thought you said his name was Ice Cream, and that would have been very interesting. Well, joining us today is Ice Cream. It's like, oh, great, finally. You know, we come in here and finally get something to eat. But no, no, instead we just get some other guy who thinks he's funnier than us. <laughs> uh, how are you doing, Wills? Oh, well, as splendiferous as you can when the outside, when the outside it's snowing. Yes, it's snowing. We got the first snow over here in Minnesota. Ah. Yay, snow is fun. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's great. It's wonderful. It just had to come on the day when I don't have good tires on my car. So I am sliding all over the damn place. <laughs> oh, you're drifting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 The initial D music, man. <laughs> <laughs> gas, gas, gas. I'm gonna step on the gas. Oh. And the brakes. Oh god, I'm stepping on the brakes. <laughs> Help me. Ah! I hope your situation change. Probably put some chains on your wheels or something like that. Uh, no, you can't put chains on your wheels. And... What? You don't do that anymore? It's not tank. <laughs> I'm not saying threads. Oh god. But anywho, um, let's head on into the news. And before we officially head on to the news, uh, we all seen the movie, right? Uh, yeah. The MLP movie, you mean? Yep, yep. The, well, I've seen it. I don't know about you, gentlemen. I, we did, we did. It was fun. Good watch. I, I would recommend people go watching it if it's available still. Is it available still in your location, Will? Yeah. That uh, just depends on what theater. Didn't have a very wide release. Really? No. Huh. All right, then. But, anywho, um, if you enjoy the first movie, guess what? There's a second possible movie on the way. Possibly. Ooh. <laughs> In a current Hasbro investor conference call, um, one of the hit hancho, the Hasbro CEO, Brian Goldern, Goldern, something like that, uh, he reported that the model for my Little Pony has re- uh, recently worked, and I think the team is beginning to think about what a next movie will look like. So, hey, if it works, it works, and if there's another movie, I'm not going to say no to it. Who knows? Maybe they'll uh, not have to be formulaic like uh, the first one was. Maybe they'll, you know, stretch their wings and do something pretty dang creative. Who knows? True, true, or true. maybe they'll be stuck by corporate overlords to like, no, it must follow this tired, tired and true hackneyed story, story subject matter. It's like, no, no, we must do what Sony Pictures is doing. No. We must bring the ponies to New York. No, <laughs> you know, there's a possible chance of that happening. You know, you know, Equestria Girls uh. instead of New York, it could be Cantalot High, something like that. I mean, they've done it before. <laughs> Oh god, no, wheels, you curse us all. Suddenly, human in Earth. And no, a pony's in Earth. <laughs> oh god, no. Oh god, no. <laughs> Probably they would do something like that, those monsters. Special guest star, Neil Patrick Harris! <laughs> <laughs> I'm still relevant, right? I'm still relevant, please? <laughs> please tell me I'm still relevant! Oh boy. With musical guest stars, uh, Lady Gaga. I don't know. I liked her better when she was called Countess Coloratura. <laughs> Two totally different characters, man. Oh, but no, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, uh, the Pony movie did really interestingly. And talking about the Hasbro Investor Report call, it was, well, you know, their standard thing that they do every third quarter, something like that, well, and, and stuff. And it's the good people at EQD broke it down for us to, well, kind of read it through without listening to the whole thing. Franchise brand increased by 7% with Pony being one of the big ones. So you can guess who are the others. The movie was successful at re-energizing and inviting new fans from their standpoint. Yes, that point. Yep, yep. Uh, they are banking on making good money from the sales of Blu-rays and DVDs. That is a given. The movie is just shy of 40 mil. Uh, it was last reported about 35 mil. So yay, go them. 
just an additional uh, information. It's it's not released in all of the countries yet because we still have some countries not yet received their uh, viewings like uh, UK. Was it UK? Oh, wait, no. I think UK was just recently. And then Australia and Singapore will be getting it on November the 2nd. And well, there's a lot of lists here that goes through it. But long story short, um, they're going to do more things like uh, driving games, general toys and more, more post. More pony games possibly on the way, probably mobile, uh, things that use, you know what, it's ponies, like they're focusing on ponies more, so ponies is kind of leading Hasbro on the track to success, yay. So what the real question is here is that with ponies being kind of the hallmark of success for Hasbro, do you think Hasbro is going to follow suit with the same formula with other brands like Transformers or Hanazuki? No, they're going to milk this. They're going to milk this dry and then keep on milking it until there's nothing left. Huh. And then yeah, they'll get much. Michael Bay to do something. Oh, God. Oh, talking about Michael Bay. It's a bit off topic. But talking about Michael Bay, did you know that he's um, going to be producing Dora the Explorer? His company. <laughs> if, they, if, it, if it is anything like the college humor <laughs> adult Dora the Explorer uh, joke video, then I'm all for it. <laughs> I, I have no comments when I see the the when I see them mentioning about the Dora the Explorer movie. I was like, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, in all honesty, in all honesty, for me personally, I'm excited for it. <laughs> it's one of those morbid curiosities where I know that if Michael Bay's branding is on it, it's going to be dumb popcorn fun. It happens with the turtle. It happened with the Transformers. And you find the word fun. Exploding, mindless fun. Theater fun, mostly. <laughs> but still, okay. so that's it's, what you mean. it's one of those situations where mindless theater fun. But when it comes to Dora Explorer, you know, I know that it's a wholesome, highly educational movie. Teach kids how to speak Spanish. See. And other than that, I got no idea what it can do. Like, a good example is Transformers. Like, Transformers is all about the robots fighting and whatnot. Yeah, they have wars. They kind of want to uh, duke it out on Earth. Simple. The thing that I'm, I'm actually questioning about the Dora the Explorer, the movie, it was which version are they going to do? The the kids version one or the teenager version? Mm, yes, that, that is a good question. How about the version uh, where uh, Dora explores the fact that she needs to actually go pick up the dang groceries instead of going to Blueberry Hill again? <laughs> all right, girl? Listen, your abuela just needs some milk, all right? Milk and eggs. Not going to go to some frickin' blueberries on a frickin' mountain somewhere about, you know, three hours away, all right? Wanted to make some omelets. <laughs> Wasting our time, Dora. Or, or here, here's something. Make it like Tomb Raider. Like, that's what Michael B is gonna do. Make it like Tomb Raider and, uh, Dora here has a monkey sidekick and the villain is the weasel and his name is, um, what, Swiper? And Swiper is not his yeah, name. Swiper. Yeah, to, to, which, to, to which now, to which now I'm seeing a picture in my head of Dora the Explorer with dual pistols. <laughs> Swiper, no swiping. <laughs> yeah, okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. Swiper is not a weasel, but it's an acronym for something. So, ooh. <laughs> oh god. Gosh. <laughs> okay, back to ponies. Ponies are successful. Uh, Hasbro might use the same model on other shows. I don't know, because if they do the same model, the next thing you know is a transformer kind of crap. <laughs> <laughs> no. Am I, am I sunk? No, what I mean is by the same model is the mindset of how things work. Like, it, the success of ponies was a good story first, then uh, marketing. But that is true. Yeah, we, we, but with other shows, it has always been marketing first and then story second. So we'll see how it goes after ponies because it'll be interesting if Hasbro takes this as kind of a lesson to learn and see how it goes beyond that point. And well, with that, we head on to the next news. And since season seven is ending today, the twenty eighth of October. We won't be getting any new ponies anytime soon. And, well, it looks like we may have gotten 
quote unquote leaks of who the villain is going to be for season eight. And it's not the Buck Pony, as some of you might know. Oh no, no. This is someone mm. else. This is this is someone more vicious. This is one of Twilight's greatest, greatest enemies. Ah, <laughs> yes, of course. Quesadillas. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Quesadilla. <laughs> Oh, the you had to bring it to the Spanish theater, didn't you? It was all Dora, and now Dora's going to feed Twilight quesadillas. How dare you? <laughs> Cheesy quesadilla. Oh, no. But that brings up the question, does Twilight like pizza or not? Huh. Good one. Oh, uh, wait. Mm. She is, she eats hamburger, so let's just say she does. <laughs> no, you don't have cheese on hamburgers, quote-unquote. Oh, you always have cheese on hamburgers. It's... Sacrilege yes. not to. I know, but and then, yes. but that then wait a minute. If she doesn't like hamburgers, she doesn't like pizza. She doesn't like quesadillas. And she hates things that are cheesy. She must abhor Rob Schneider films. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! But no, uh, getting back on track. Uh, the actor Mark Eckerson, known for some role, I think. Like, I, I know it'll be... Oh, you got Snake on. I, I'm sure it's not Metal Gear Solid, but still. Um, Mark Erickson here played roles in movies like Hawk vs. Uh, I think he was mostly well known for... What did he play? Huh, you know what? I'm not going to go in depth to it, but still. He plays a few roles that are pretty interesting. Like, I think he was well known for his voice acting and some of his acting roles. And just waiting on IMDb to load up so I can list down some of his, well, uh, well-known yeah. roles. Uh, it seems that he played in Watchmen, uh, Reindeer, Reindeer Games, really now, The Chronicle of Riddick, Hot Rod, and, oh, Van Helsing, the TV series, the 2016 one, okay. And a few, many more. But the main reason why I'm bringing him up here is because he played a role in My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, and said role is Lord Tyrek. A gasp. Oh, sweet. We get to have the buff, jacked Minotaur who doesn't understand what leg day is. <laughs> have you seen any horse with leg day? Come on. <laughs> but anywho, um, in a recent Facebook post, he mentioned that he's psyched for the movie reprisal role I played in series plot well as, as well as season 8 of My Little Pony reprising the villain Lord Tyrek. So, okay, there's two things in one. Yeah, th thanks. Um, what do you call Mark? You, you, you didn't? Yeah, okay, anyway. Uh, so, he's playing season 8 Tyrek. So, yay, there's something new. Mm -hmm. And, yay! Mm -hmm. And if you've seen the previews, it sounds like we're going to have two major villains in one season. Oh. So two major villains teaming up, that sounds pretty dang scary. Yep, but you have to remember... The return of the villains. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to yeah, remember. All, two of, all two of them that aren't re redeemed. Uh, who aren't redeemed, yes, that's true. There's a third one, but... That's not a word! No, we've got to cut that one out. Studio, please help me that. <laughs> Actually, uh... Well, I think about it, I kind of hope that what happens is like from that, uh, one of those fan comics is, uh, and Crystal's in a maid outfit and, and, uh, good old, uh, Tyrick in a butler outfit working in Twilight's castle. It's just like, why are we doing this? Well, it's either this or becoming reformed and learning about friendship. <laughs> <laughs> friendship. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, but what can I say? It's, um, it's yay, too fast, too soon. But in all honesty, you can't really say anything much to this. The guy is an actor. He does stuff and actors do what they want to do. Mm. <sighs> but talking about people who are doing what they want to do, we got this um one tweet by, well, not really one tweet, but uh, who do I put this? Uh, somehow it got, word gotten out that Daniel Ingram is not going to be working on the EQG song anymore, Equestria Girls, that is. And someone asked. It was confirmed by the director that, nah, uh, Daniel Ingram won't be working on the 
show anymore. His last contribution to the show was Good Vibes. And after that, someone knew he was going to do most of the songs for Equestria Girls. So, hmm. I hope that this new guy does have the same quality as Daniel Ingram, or even better. Um, probably, maybe get selected by Daniel Ingram to do this. Maybe. Eh, nah, that's wishful thinking. In all honesty, what would happen is that Hasbro are just going to pay somebody off with the right talent and right price. Eh. Are you a big fan of the Equestria Girls? Not really, no. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to look at every now and then, but... I'm actually curious um, who they are actually going to get as the new uh, sound director hmm. Hmm. or music director. Oh, well, I've got no idea, but let's just hope that the guy replacing him is talented AF. Uh, but what I do know is, right, that uh, this kind of lines in with what will be happening with Equestria Girls. Uh, last week, we reported that there'll be 45 episodes of Equestria Girls, but most of them will be short series or short web series. And my estimation is they'll be probably within the 150 to, sorry, 130 to 5 minute marks worth of content for each episode, I hope. And it's going to be one of those shorts where, oh, Rarity needs a... Uh, hairdo, she goes to salon. Oh, why do I say that? Right, it's much better than that. Uh, I did that, that. Like, let's see. It looks like this is only, yeah, it's for the shorts. So maybe if there's a full length video or full length series, Ingram will be back. So yay. Any of you a big fan of Daniel Ingram? Well, his music is awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's a creative individual and I like his stuff, yeah. All mm-hmm. right then. That's good enough for me, because <laughs> this song in the movie was good. Really, really good. And talking about creative individuals, uh, you guys remember that one scene or that one quickie of well, um, Pinkie Pie making scrapbooks for Zuri Hart? Yes. <laughs> There's a question mark behind that, yes. Uh, but still, if you guys don't remember, it's okay, because it's, well, some people like it, some people don't. And, well, I'm in the camp of, mm, I'm so-so on it. Not a big fan. Like, I don't mind sitting down and looking at it, but other than that, eh. But why I'm bringing it up here is that uh, there's a behind the scene video of the stuff who made the shorts. And it's really interesting. And I think they outsourced this to another company to do it. You could say it was quite the heartfelt project. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, you're starting to become like silver. <laughs> oh. Starting? Starting? Oh. We're, in comp- we're in constant competition, good sir. <laughs> oh, God. He just, he just has seniority, so give it time. <laughs> All right, then. But still, um, uh, it's a look we had behind the scenes of how things are done, the way that things are done. And I would say go watch it. Like, this one is really interesting. They say that they get all the assets and go through every scene, like everything. And even, well, a few other things that we don't really know, like how things are made and stuff, even the soundtrack. So if you're a fan of things behind the scenes, I would suggest go and watch this because this is really highly educational in terms of how things are done. It's always nice to see behind the scenes of nearly any project because, well, you get to understand the creative mind behind it and also get to realize just how much effort goes into pretty much anything. Yep, yep, that is true, that is true. But anywho, that's the last news for this week. So let's head on to my favorite topic of the week is what have we been doing with our week? There's a lot of weeks in there. And Will, you had a lot of say at the, before we started the show. So what have you been oh. doing, man? <laughs> I have lost my life and lost my sanity and my mind to Divinity 2, Original Sin. Guaranteed to be a game that if you like traditional pen and paper RPGs, you like role-playing, and I mean actual... RPGs, role-playing games, not this Fallout 4 is an RPG because it has stats. 
But Fallout no. 4 is uh, popular and fun. It can be popular and fun, but it's not Fallout. <laughs> it's not a Fallout game. It's a first-person shooter. But I'm not here to complain about Fallout 4. I'm here to tell you how great Divinity 2 is. And how great is it? Well, let's just put it this way, folks. I currently have over 109 hours invested into this game. And I think I just reached the halfway point. <laughs> Now, that's not saying that uh, you will spend as much time as me, uh, but uh, if you are a person who likes to see every nook and cranny along the way, you are going to be spending a lot of time because there is a lot of content in this game. So the game is hard in the sense of it's a challenge. You have to learn how to work this game. This game this game is no cheap date. It expects you to know the dance. It expects you to know the tango. It expects you to treat it right, you know, give it a good time. And if you don't, well, she'll beat you up and throw you out like a used piece of trash, all right? Because guarantee you, this game is going to make you probably throw your keyboard around a little until you realize just how it works. And then you'll be, like, having the most dying fun of your time, especially when you find out that you can... Combine any character and any abilities, both in and outside of combat. Like, hey, you want a necromancer who is also a rogue so that uh, he sneaks up behind guys, backstabs them, and then turns them into mindless uh, shambling corpses? Well, you can do that. Or if you want to have a pyromancer who fills literally the entire stage with nothing but fire until literally the entire floor is on fire and the floor is literally lava. <laughs> Congratulations, you can do that. And let's say you wanted to be an archer who's raining down death from above, but also someone gets in close, you could just, uh, I don't know, uh, electrocute them because you're an aeromancer as well and uh, rain down storm clouds along with arrows. Well, you can do that. And any combination in between. There is no wrong way to play Divinity, un unless you're just going around thinking it's a Diablo clone. <laughs> that, then that is a wrong way. That is a horribly wrong way. And we will laugh at you. And the game will laugh at you. All right, Will, so I'm looking at it right now on the Steam, and it's selling for about, I think, $30 or so? Probably somewhere around that? 40 maybe? Really? Uh, oh yeah, we got there's there's Halloween sales right now, so yeah, folks, snack up those Halloween sales. Oh right, just... but the thing is, I'm looking through this and the sense of Diablo two or Diablo three is there, but you say it's not. I'm thinking it's a turn based RPG. So would you account this to similar to Dungeons and Dragons? I'd say like pen and paper, Dungeons and Dragons. Um. Definitely, uh, especially because this game also offers the ability for you to create your own matches. Like, you, you basically, you can be a dungeon master, make a map, place enemies, come up with your own stuff, basically. So when you say that, does this game offer multiplayer? Yes, it does. Drop in, drop out multiplayer. Local and, or uh, online? Yeah, um, both, actually. Hmm. So you can just have a grand old time in a LAN party, or you could uh, team up with some friends if you want to join their game. Oh, that is cool. So have you been playing solo or with people? Uh, solo, because uh, playing with people is... It's okay, but honestly, that's more so... You, you want to at least play the game through by yourself so you can have the full art. Because the thing is, when you do play uh, with other people, only one of you can really uh, do the whole RP elements of the game. Oh. You know, everyone else is just like a, just there for the combat. All right, you know, all right. But the combat is really fun. The combat is really fun though. All right. And from what I'm seeing here, this game is pretty recent. It came out on November 14, 2017, and it's very positive on the Steam marketplace. So, yeah, that's very good. Anything else to add, Will? Only that I wish I had more time in my life to play this. <laughs> uh, don't we all? Don't we all? Next on the block is Star. Uh, what about you, man? What have you been doing with your week? Obviously, I could just say that it's been a week of, I think, pretty much the same. <laughs> what, Divinity 2? <laughs> no, like, no, it's just that it's kind of a, uh, well, let's just say that it's a slow week. 
nothing uh, new happened for me. Uh, other than the fact that uh, I just watched the movie again at the cinema. Oh, that's cool. So what? This is your yep. second time watching it. Yep. Oh, well, nice. obviously it's uh, the last day, so I just go watch it on the last screening. <laughs> all right, all right. That's cool. That's cool. And wow, um, is that about it? Yeah, pretty much. Oh, all righty then. And well, next up is me. And well, as for me, I've been well besides doing the PDs and the Overwatch, I've added something new to the list, and that's been playing Diablo Three. The whole reasoning about Diablo 3 is I bought the game when it first launched. Like, it's one of those hype games from way back when I was a big fan of Diablo 2. And when I heard Diablo 3 is coming out and it was going to come out pretty soon, I got hype and bought the game. And didn't play it for a very, very long time, even after the expansion came out. And, well, just one of those days when I wanted some mindless... Uh, button mashing stuff like just go dungeon kill this kill that for the fun of it i pop in some diablo 3 and went to it with a new character and whatnot it was fun it was fun simple fun i, I was hoping for dungeon crawling fun but star here came in and said that hey uh, why not you upgrade the game it will be much more fun and it took me a while and i did and whoo boys was it a challenge? And playing um, Reaper of Souls, it is fun. And the thing is, like, the game has been out for a while now, and the support has been interesting. I'm not in too deep of the Diablo lore or whatever it is, so I got no idea of how things are run. But from what I can tell, that they're really emphasizing on grinding and Grinding is not one of my favorite things to do. And I get a feeling that I'll probably won't be playing this game for a while. Like, just leave it be for a bit. And then when the itch is there, I'll go scratch it. But from what I'm playing right now, it seems really fun. Seems really fun. And besides the Diablo tree, that's about it. I was just thinking how opposite, how very similar the two games of Divinity and Diablo 3 are, but very different. Yeah, it's one of those things where they look the same, but they don't play the same. And I'm guessing yours is much more fun in terms of its storytelling. Yes? Uh, well, that's debatable. I mean, I haven't seen, I haven't played the other ones, so I can't attest to how its story goes. Wait, okay, I ask you this, I ask you this. Do you have a choice in your actions or wording? Oh, h- h- hundreds of choices. Alright, I don't. Okay. It's a loot grinding game. It's basically you go to dungeon, uh, kill monsters, get loot, and then rinse repeat. That's what I'm seeing with the end game there. But yeah, it's one of those things where it's always been the grind. People play the game for the grind. And people who like grinding are, well, I'm guessing they're gonna like this. Eh? But other than that, I can't say much. So if you guys at home, have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshowgmail.com. You can reach the show's Twitter account at the MBS Show. And as for me, you can reach me at Norman Sanzo. Star, where can the good people find you? People can find me on my Twitter, AngelicorXX, or my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX. Alrighty then. And what about you, Wills? If you want to find me, you can find me. Uh, anything at W-I-L-I-Z-I-N. So that's W-I-L-I-Z-I-N on DeviantArt, on Tumblr, on Twitter, on FimFiction, on the billboard outside, on your fence, and on your mind. <laughs> oh no, it's in my mind. It's in my mind. <laughs> uh, and also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyFlive.com. Links will be in the show notes. And also, please do subscribe to our news endeavor, the MBS Show Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Over there, you'll get me, Silver Quill, and Sapphire Heart Songs. Review the My Little Pony episodes, comics, and movies. And also some other things. And one coming up pretty soon, or well, that one just came up for Halloween, is our review of Elvin and the Chipmunk Meet the Wolfman. Ooh, scary! Yeah, Alvin and the Chipmunks, that actually is freaking terrifying. You have sterner stuff than me, man. (laughs) Yes. So, yeah, um, 
that thing is over there and do subscribe. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show over there. With every support, you'll get earlier access to the review and discussion podcast, deleted contents, exclusives, and also a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurka, Cat, and Dracatoria, Starstream, and also Master of Lag. Thank you guys for the support. And also that one exclusive content I was mentioning about, me and a group of my friends who went to watch the movie had some first impressions about the movies no spoilers so if you want to check that one out well, go support us on the Patreon it's over there yay so anyway I have been Norman Sanzo this is Lastry I have been Willison and we'll guys catch you next week with another amazing and fun show the Yes Show see ya see ya so long farewell get out <laughs>